here to replace a control board in this Daikin unit. Seems to be bad. The uh, indoor unit sends out this little pulse to like initiate communication and then this, uh, this unit never seems to give back any. I think I got this set it right. 200 volt range, 10X to match the probe. Maybe set the power over here. Usually, see, I've noticed is an AC signal generated from the indoor unit downstairs. And after that, on a normally functioning system, you'll get the communication going. There we go. That's generated from the indoor unit. And then right now, you would expect to see data communication between the two units. I tested this on working unit, kind of confirmed what to expect. There's again, you're getting the little AC voltage from the indoor unit. The outdoor unit sees, but the outdoor unit does not seem to respond. Well, that was really fun getting that out of there. And unlike uh, Mitsubishi and LGs and stuff, where uh, almost every wire unclips off of the moat, unclips off of the main control board, uh, there's a ton of wires that do not unclip. So you therefore have to unhook them from where they go, cutting every zip tie that they're tied to. Look at this, this is just crazy. Input output wires, instead of just plugging in the board, you have to unhook these from the base on the front, which is this. Plugs in right there. This screws on like this. <laughs> these two cables here. Got to run through, go through this hole right here, plug into this little switchboard. I guess that way you can get to it from, you know, from the front panel. That's just crazy. Got the new control board installed. Scope hooked back up. Let's see what we get here. The sun's even a little more bright in my eyes. There's the AC. Now watch, you should start to see some small. There we go, there's communication. Yep, I can hear the expansion valve rotating inside this unit. So it's definitely doing something. So that's, that's normal operation right there. Get this somewhat high voltage AC signal generated from the indoor unit across terminals S2 and S3. Seems to initiate the communication and then the uh, outdoor unit will talk back, and then you got normal communication here. So that is cool, and I just assume the thing is gonna fire up and run, which you really enjoy without having a panel on. <laughs> but yeah, so that control board was indeed bad, which I pretty much knew by process of elimination. You know, but again, it said the official documentation troubleshooting. You know. A lot of these units, they tell you, do this, do this. Okay, change this, unit, this board. Did it correct the problem? No? Okay, change the other board. <laughs> that's, that's just what you get. Mitsubishi, whatever, Dyke in here. That's, so, yeah. And I might have to go down there and set the thermostat. This thing's been off for weeks. But and now this indoor unit is responsive. Let's be turn it on and turn the temperature down. Something it would not do before. Looks like it's kicked on up here. Get a screw in on that. And up here, this sucker is chatting up a storm now. Look at that. Porting data between the two boards. Look at that. I do need to be careful touching right here. So I have the electrical tape. Um, there's high voltage potential to ground from uh, that negative terminal there. S2, got about 120 volts to ground there. So I learned my lesson once. Didn't have tape to set that down, let it touch metal, boom! Uh, all right, finishing doing a full check on this. Now I 
operated cooling and nice 54 degree air coming out down in that room below. Now I have it in heat. Yeah. Just cranking away. Take another look at the scope here. There is a, a feature to turn on a little get more information there. It tells you duty cycle minimum or maximum voltage, average voltage. Go across S1, S2 there. See how V max 300 volts, but volts RMS. About 216 volts. Something like that. Alright, so looking here at the communication. Volt RMS is bouncing between 26 volts and like 50, 52 volts. Maybe that's the uh, oscillating, you know, voltage you're telling you to look for on your digital multimeter. Again, good luck with that. It's depending on the sample rate, just how your meter works. But they just tell you to look for that voltage dancing around and that proves that you have communication. But as you can see with the little oscilloscope here, little El Cheapo Amazon Special, does a pretty good job at visually showing me what's going on in that extra little panel there showing me um, the values is pretty cool so V max like 50 something volts it's going up and down I guess it doesn't hold that the average got the RMS so it's definitely dancing around you can see all the readings going nuts so you can turn that feature off Look at the uh, scoping in there. Turn that back on. You got that again. Sweet. What is up, guys? Just got done using my little handheld oscilloscope to diagnose another Mitsubishi unit. So like I did that Daikin unit. Had some issues there. But look at this, it's communicating just fine between the indoor and outdoor unit. Let's see if we get a little close up here. It's a little bright up here. Reading between the S2 and S3 terminals there. So we had going with this one is uh, some black wire on the S1 going to the indoor unit. It was open. We we're trying to figure out this wiring goes down through the gooseneck, but they kind of cheated on us and ran that one room over through a different conduit over here. And we found that the wire in this conduit, <laughs> the wire kind of filled up with water. Yeah, but it corroded. It like arced, got through this wire. Probably hard to see on this bright roof, but jacked it up. We pulled out the other wire, it broke right at the same, about the same spot in the conduit. It was arcing like crazy. Never blew any of the fuses on the circuit board. Cause you got high voltage, it comes out of the disconnect, goes into these units, goes through the circuit board, out fuses generally, most of them do. And then, so then the S1, S2, you know, going down below usually has some fuses on there. I don't see it on that board, <laughs> but it didn't pop a board or blow a fuse or, anything it just one unit quit and the other two units on this condenser still worked just one room went down below it's got three electronic spanch valves it's a three port system yeah so anyway we just pulled some new wire between here and over there into that four by four box where it goes down this is on top of a fourth floor and it's down on the first floor where it quit so we ain't home running no wire so just got that sucker up and running so it's pretty cool. It's just kind of neat to use. It's kind of cool to see the signals on here. Because if you put your voltmeter on there, you know, so they tell you to do. They say put it to DC and just watch for the plus minus voltage or something. But it's, depending on the speed of your meter and everything, you know, you don't know what you can see exactly. But it just dances around. That's normal. There we go. Switch the polarity here. It doesn't make any difference really. But yeah. If it just stays steady, then you're not getting communication. And what I've noticed on these units, I believe, is that uh, we turn on the power, the uh, S3 coming back, at least I know on the Dykert for sure, the there's a signal initiated from the indoor unit, comes out to the outdoor unit, and then they'll start, it sees it and it starts communicating. It'll try a few times before they go into lockout usually. But the instructions on these things, they just tell you to put like DC voltage and 
see if it's going alternating, you know, between plus and minus or whatever. And then, like they'll say, do you have it or don't you have it? And then it'll be like, you just follow a flow chart. It'll be like, okay, you, no? Okay, replace indoor board or something like that. Did that correct the problem? No? Then it'll be like the next step of the flow chart is replace the outdoor board. That's literally how it's, the tech manuals work on these things. It's crazy. So, so I could get a little better by just figuring this stuff out on my own. Just like I figured out I better put electrical tape on this because all potentials are high voltage here. So there. And it'll short if you let it touch, but just gotta make sure you put this on 10X to divide by 10. Otherwise you'll send high voltage into these things and just blow them to hell.